Hey guys, it's a long weekend, so I've decided to install the Gallagher security system out in the shed. And I thought it would be a good idea just to document um, the process of doing that and what's involved in installing the system. So we've got uh, a two-door controller variant here. I've pre-wired it as much as I feel I need to before mounting it. So we've got the power supply here, got a couple of battery leads, uh, an eight in two outdoor module, and the controller 6000 two-door itself. So that's all pre-wired in. You can see the port B is uh, configured to this expander module here. Uh, I've already added the controller to command center because it's actually my key controller. It's running the license. Um, just kind of had it sitting there on a shelf doing nothing. So perfect time to get it installed in the shed and get a bit of security protection out there. I've laid out everything that I think I'm going to need this weekend. We've got some security cable, power cable, uh, a couple of PIRs to choose from. Not sure which one I'm going to use yet, but we'll, uh, we'll decide that once it's in. Uh, we've got 4K7 resistors, and for the interface, the terminal, we're going to be using the Gallagher T20. This is the 460 variant. It's the uh, multi-tech reader, so it does support um, access control as well. So down the road when I install access control doors out there, which is pretty much inevitable, um, it's all ready to go. Originally, I was going to install an Ethernet cable underground, um, but we're going to be doing a huge upgrade to the shed not too far from now. So I decided in the meantime, we're going to try a wireless link. First time I've tried a wireless link, I think it's going to be fine. These things are rated for like five kilometers. It's only going a few hundred meters. Uh, I've also had this up and running on the controller for the past few days. I don't get any network transaction timeouts or anything, so uh, it should be fine. Anyway, what we're going to do now is I'll take you out to the shed, we'll get this hockey puck mast installed, get the um, nano station up and running, and we'll make sure we've got a good strong link. See you soon. Apologies for the less than ideal lighting, it's a little bit dark in the shed here. Um, but I've picked this rear storage room to install the controller in, because this door here is eventually going to be access controlled, so it would be really nice to have that uh, behind a protected door. Anyway, I will put the camera down and we will get this cabinet mounted where it's going to go. Okay, so I've got the cabinet installed with these nice thick bolts here. It's not going anywhere, solid as anything, and I've leveled it off. So next thing we need to do is get a power cable out here and just mount a temporary power point. I don't think I'm going to mount a permanent power point yet because as I said, we're going to upgrade the whole electrical system and do a massive upgrade on the shed. So we'll just get a basic power point set up next to the controller uh, for now and get it powered up. All right, so we've got the power feed run. You can just see it running along the top there. Uh, eventually we're gonna do everything in conduit, but for now this is pretty good. So we'll just give these outlets a test to make sure they're all good. Yep, that one's good. And the top one. Also looking pretty good. Right, so I've got the link mounted on the pole roughly in the direction it's going to go. So I figured if the shed is this way, it's going to relatively be pointing about there. But we can do some fine tuning. What we'll do is we'll plug in the laptop and we will calibrate it to get the strongest signal. Uh, so now we need to make up an Ethernet connector to go into the end of the microwave link. Okay, so let's terminate this cable now. So first of all, we need to take back the outer sheath. Uh, we need to be careful not to nick the inner cable cores and that should come off and now we just need to inspect the cable to make sure there's no nicks anywhere which i can see it looks pretty good uh, and then we need to separate each individual core and we just want to cut the strain relief and the pull string in the middle Being careful not to cut any of the individual cores. Okay, so now we can start laying it out to fit inside the connector. So I always use, uh, I think it's T568B, if I'm not mistaken. So, go light green, green, light orange. Blue, then light blue. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it in the frame here. 
and then finally orange then light brown then brown so that's the correct configuration we just need to straighten the cables up now you can see they're all relatively straight that's looking pretty good and now we'll just make sure they're all the same length so they go in the connector the same amount so I'll just take this cut off all the ends and then we'll slide the connector on These connectors can be a bit tricky, but they're still a hell of a lot better than pass-through connectors because you don't have to worry about shorting. So light green, 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 light orange, blue, light blue, orange, light brown, brown. Okay, so that's looking good. I can see all the cores are pushing against the back of the plug there. That's what we want to see because these little golden pins will push into the cables. Okay, let's crimp the cable. So stick it in the correct port here. Crimp it down like so. And there we should have a perfectly terminated Ethernet cable all going well. Uh, we won't be able to test it until we put the other end on, so we'll get it up on, on the pole and um, then we'll test it once it's all installed. All right, I'll see you shortly for the mounting process. All right, so the Ethernet cable's been run up the pole. It's pointing in roughly the right direction. Uh, now we just have to bring the cable into the shed. All right, we've drilled a little hole. So let's go around to the other side and see if it's going to line up. There it is, perfect. It's pretty much right where I want it. through the wall and once we're finished we'll just use a bit of silicon to seal it What I'll do is I'll just leave a small drip loop there so if the water runs down it drops off here before it has a chance to go back in and then with a little bit of silicon there we should be good to go. I've added the connector to the end of the cable I wasn't going to show that again I mean if you've seen it once you've seen it a million times but exactly the same color codes on the other end because uh, it's not a crossover cable we're going for straight pass through. Uh, now that that's through the wall all that we need to do is um, go get our tester and uh, test the Ethernet cable I mean, you could just chance it and try and plug it in, but it's, it's good to know about issues, um, you know, because sometimes cables work, but they don't work as intended or the speeds are not reached. So we'll just give it a quick test, make sure the cable's all good. And then um, after that, we can do a calibration, uh, calibration setting on the link. I've got the tester on the other end. And we'll plug this cable in and see if it's all good. That is looking pretty good to me. Okay, so we can remove it from here now. Oh, it wants to go out. Gosh, these new connectors are a bit tricky to get out. All right, so this one goes into the POE side. I don't want to plug this in yet because I've still got the other end of the tester on. Um, so I'll go take that off, plug it into the antenna, and then we should be good for a test. All right, so the unit's now powered up. We've got the PoE in, and we can go to the computer and check what the signal is. If the signal's good enough, I may not calibrate it. I mean, if it's lower than negative 50 uh, dBm, I'd be pretty happy. So let's go to the computer and have a look. product looks like okay Ooh, it's 
a bit flickery. That's better. So what we can do now is log into the interface. So if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 192. Okay, so we're logged in now and we are getting negative 35 dBm, which is pretty damn good. Um, maybe I will try and calibrate it a bit. There is something I want to try. Apparently there's a tool where you can have it beep. So let's try that. So line antenna. We will adjust our maximum strength to negative 11 and we will enable the beep. And let's see how that goes. So I fiddled around for the antenna and the best I could get it was negative 32 dBm, which is pretty, pretty good. So uh, now we're just going to use some silicon to fill in that hole there. And then we can finish mounting everything properly on the inside. Okay, so I've got everything to a point where I'm pretty happy with it. The controller has just booted up now. Um, so we'll head over to one of the other terminals and make sure it's coming online. And then after this, pretty much the only things left to do is just to install the battery, the keypad, and a couple of PIR sensors. Okay, hopefully it's just still booting up and we see that light come on shortly, but as of now, it still appears to be offline. There we go, look at that, it's online. So we are gonna get a few error messages through because the keypad's not connected or the terminal's not connected to the shed controller. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for this video. Uh, and then in the next video, we will look at installing the keypad, the PIR sensors, and the sirens. Stay tuned and see you next time.